Hi Nat Fives, we are looking at the second surface for exchange, this is the villus, um, and we're looking at how you absorb materials from that. Okay, so digestion is you using the food that comes into your body and breaking it down to a position where you can actually absorb it into your bloodstream. Until you do that, the food you've eaten has not actually done you much good at all, okay, because you haven't actually absorbed it. And so what you first need to do is to break it down. And we're not going to go into a huge amount of detail on exactly how it does this, because there's there's various chemical things that happen, like the acid digestion in your stomach, mechanical things like crushing with your teeth and the types of teeth that do different things, but we're not going to look at those. I am going to go through the enzyme reactions because they are very useful as examples of degradation reactions, and it also shows you exactly how you manage to break them down. Um, what you need to know is where the end products go. And as I say, we'll look at the enzyme examples because they're useful. So here is your your basic digestive system. So you've got at the top of it, obviously, your mouth, uh, where you're going to chew up your food. And then we our food goes down into the throat, uh, where you swallow it, making sure that actually this bit here they're showing here is the two different pipes at the back of your throat. One is to your lungs and one is to your stomach. It is rather important that it goes down the one to your stomach. So you have basically have a little kind of flap here which controls which one of these is open. It is also why it's really important not to talk with your mouthful because when you need to talk, you need air to come up through this pipe. And this little thing which is moving back and forward can get a little bit confused if you try to swallow at the same time as talking, which is why it's not only rude, but there's a reason for it as well. Okay. It goes down from your throat into your esophagus, which is also called the gullet. Okay, and then that goes into your stomach, which is like an acid bath, and then comes out of your stomach into the small intestine, and then from the small intestine out and into your large intestine. Finally, you keep it, whatever's left in the rectum, and then you get rid of it. Okay, so your liver and your gallbladder are in here because they're doing extra things, as is the pancreas, to help out with digestion. OK, so when you actually first take in a bit of food, obviously the first place you go is the mouth and you start grinding it up. Now, the first bit that you're going to do some work with is starch. Now, you should kind of know the SAM bit, starch, amylase, maltose. But inside the mouth, you produce something called salivary amylase, which not surprising because it comes from the saliva glands. And that starts the breakdown of starch. So if you take something that's starchy, like a piece of bread, and just hold it in your mouth, it will start to taste sweet because you start to release some of the sugar from the starch. Nothing else really gets done to it apart from chewing, which is really important. Okay, you then swallow it and it goes all the way down the esophagus. It moves in a kind of pushing down with circles of muscles above and relaxing below. It's called peristalsis. In the stomach, our proteins start getting a little bit of action. They start getting broken down. And you should recognize this one, protein, pepsin, polypeptides. OK, this one is important as an example for enzyme reactions because it is in the stomach, which is pH 2, which means this particular enzyme has an optimum, which is unusual. And so it's a really good example for that. OK, so at this point, we've managed to break down our starch into maltose, our proteins into polypeptides, and we then empty everything into the small intestine. Now, the small intestine is actually where you do the most of the work because you finish off all the digestion and you absorb it okay so we're going to take the maltose because that's not finished yet break it down with another enzyme called pancreatic amylase so another amylase but this time pancreatic means obviously it's come from the pancreas and make it into glucose okay so this this is now good to go you know that glucose is what we use so that's that's good to go our polypeptides polypeptides are not useful yet we need to break them down again. So we need another enzyme. We're going to use something called trypsin and it's going to break it down into amino acids. Amino acids are the final product from proteins. So these ones are now good to go as well. And finally, the other major food group is fats, which I haven't even mentioned. So nothing really happens to them until we get down to the small intestine. And then there's some important stuff that comes out from the liver called bile. Uh, well, the, from the gallbladder more precisely, and it's useful, and also another enzyme called pancreatic lipase, which breaks down fats into fatty acids and glycerol. Now, we haven't talked about that yet, you just need to know that this is the end product. Okay? So, our end products that we have we've got carbohydrates, we've got sugars, 
and proteins will go to amino acids and fats will go to fatty acids and glycerols. You just need to know. Where they actually end up, there are two different possibilities. Glucose and amino acids, so both your carbohydrates and your proteins, both of these ones, are going to end up in the blood. Okay, but the fats stuff doesn't. The fats go into a system called the lymphatic system, which is not one we've really talked about. So this is a kind of a side about the lymphatic. You don't need to know much about it. It is actually really super important. Like you, you really do need to have this functioning well, because it does all sorts of things that you don't necessarily want in your blood, and it, but it's still useful to have kind of floating around. You don't need it moving really fast, but you need it to be there. So your lymphatic system is actually all the way through the through you, but it doesn't have a, a pump. So it doesn't have a heart beating to push it around all the time. Basically, the liquid just gets moved around with the fact that you're moving around. Um, it has a lot of your, your white blood cells in here, so that's really useful. And really, most people only tend to know, notice it when the, the glands swell up. Um, and that's generally because you've got an infection, you've got loads of white cells, and so you, you'll talk about your glands being swollen. This is what it's likely to be. Um, so yes, really important, and where you're going to put your fatty acids and glycerol. Right, so we're in the small intestine, and this is where you actually do your final absorption. So this is a bit that matters in terms of your surface. It's the same as the lungs in terms of efficiency. So we're looking for large surface area, thin walls, good transport system. And this has exactly the same deal, different than the, than the lungs in terms of how it's set up, but it's the same idea. So if you take a cut through a small intestine, so remember it's a tube, so if you cut through the tube and look down, you find that it, you can see that it's got all these kind of folds on the inside of it, okay? Each fold has another fold, and those folds are the ones that you need to look at. So it's if you've taken the small intestine and you've got folds inside folds, and then you zoom in on that fold, you find more folds, and each of those folds is the fold that you need to know about, okay? This is the villus. So we're close up on a villus. Um, we need to know kind of three parts about it. The first one is the lacteal. So the lacteal is this kind of projection in here. Maybe a better one if I go for black. Okay. So the projection that's running up inside here. And then it kind of ends and then just basically kind of runs back down again. So you just have liquid moving inside here and that is your lymph. So in this bit here, this is the one where you collect your fatty acids and glycerol. Okay, so it's inside as a single kind of projection going up. Also in the lacteal though, inside, we have capillaries and those are doing exactly what you'd expect from a capillary network. So we've got we've got a branch that's coming in from an arterial, so it's splitting up into capillaries and you'll notice that these are still these are all coloured in red because they are you're oxygenated. And then as they kind of join back up again to go back down, we've kind of gone through purples to blue. So we've now got deoxygenated and that's then going off that's this way in a venule. So this is going to join up to a vein. So we've got blood coming in, blood going out. The blood coming in picks up amino acids and glucose and then goes back out carrying that away. And it goes to the liver and then the liver basically decides how much you're going to get into the blood and how much they're going to get rid of how much you're going to store. Finally, we have, just as an aside, so we said we've got folds, and then on the folds you've got the folds, which are the villus, and then if you actually zoom in, and this bit here, so if you zoom in on one cell, you find that actually even the folds have folds on top of them. So it increases the surface area even more. So we generally, the idea would be if you could unfold each of these folds and spread them out, now obviously that would be ridiculously thin, but we're talking kind of football pitch. You genuinely are an amazing thing, but you have to be amazing just to survive. And that's the last bit on this.